Yesterday we were studying uh, the eyeball, the structure of the eyeball, and today we will be discussing the problem of people who have different positions of the eyeball. يعني حوال تعرف شو حوال squint or strabismus. If we look at this young person, are both eyes in the same position? The answer is, is no. If we look at this spot of light, it's in the center of the pupil. If we look here, it is not in the center of the pupil, it's at the margin of the iris. Therefore, there is a problem. If you look at this person, you can see quite clearly that this eyeball is deviated laterally, while this is in the center. Such person will have diplopia, double vision, because you know that the macula is the most sensitive part of the retina, and the two images The two images fall on different areas, therefore the brain is going to interpret two images. Leish Fatahtu. Okay. Shaifi. Lots of people have the follow. Allah ibn Hayyim is sure. I'm sure. Allah hai ta'limat al ameen. Okay. <clears throat> Some of these squints or strabismus are mild. Some of them are quite severe and we need to know what's the story we need to know what is the story this person has this eye in the center when he is asked to look forward looking forward is called the normal gaze so he he looks in his left eye straight forward, his, eye, his right eye is looking down and lateral. So one of the muscles or one of the nerves is not working and the balance is disturbed. If you look at this young person, you can see that the right eye is in normal gaze, normal position and his left eye has deviated towards the nose or adducted or it's in. If you, can look, if you look at this kid, you can see that both eyes are directed towards the nose. There is a problem. It's either of muscles or problem of of nerves. Shafin Sor Bodo. This young girl also has a problem. Her left eye is up. This person has a severe problem. يعني عين عين في مكة وعين في القدس. Okay. This is a quite complicated problem. This kid also has a problem. This eye is deviated medially. 
can glasses correct some of these squints or strabismus? The answer is yes. Not all of them, few of them. If you correct vision, then the eye will come back in its position. This eye is, is up and in, up and medial. These are problems. And we are what? We are asking ourselves, what is the problem? Because we are problem solvers, aren't we? Doctors are problem solvers. People come to you saying, I have a problem. And you are what? You are a problem sol solver. If you don't have enough science, you have what? You have a problem as well. So if a person who has a problem meets a person who has a problem, there is no solution. This is what we always ask ourselves. What, when, where, how, and why? This is the normal gaze looking forward. If you look at the orbit and we take the roof of the orbit. Thank you. If you take the roof of the orbit, you're going to see Here's the eyeball, right? Here is the middle cranial fossa, and this is the optic nerve. You can see this white structure, this is called the common tendinous ring, or ring of zin. This is where muscles take origin, and they insert on, on the eyeball. This muscle is running lateral, and it is straight, therefore, it is called lateral rectus. <laughs> rectus because it's straight and lateral because it is lateral. This muscle is superior rectus. And this muscle is medial rectus. If you look at this diagram, these are the two eyes. This is the, this is the ethmoidal air sinus. This is the common tendinous ring of Zen. This muscle here is lateral rectus. This is superior rectus. This is medial rectus. This is the inferior rectus. And this muscle is called superior oblique because it is superior to the medial rectus and it uh, turns around the trochlea and comes back and gets inserted into the eyeball. Therefore, this is the superior oblique. On the other side, we can see the inferior rectus and there is another muscle which is called inferior oblique. So at this point, we have six muscles. If you look at this diagram, <clears throat> this is the common tendinous ring, the origin of muscles of the orbit. There is this muscle which is not taking origin from the common tendinous ring. It is taking origin from lesser wing of the sphenoid. And it runs on top of superior rectus and it comes anteriorly not inserting on the eyeball but inserting on the upper eyelid therefore when it contracts the upper eyelid is elevated therefore we call it levator palpabri superiors levator of the superior eyelid 
This muscle has part of it involuntary and most of it is voluntary. This is the inferior oblique. If you look at this diagram showing the eyeball in, in the orbit and the muscle on top of the superior rectus is levator palpebris superioris. This is superior rectus. This is the trochlea. And this is the superior oblique turning around the trochlea and inserted on the eye. This is the inferior oblique. The inferior oblique is taking origin from this area here, which is the floor of the orbit. <clears throat> Translateral and inserts on the eyeball laterally. This is the common tendinous ring, and you can conclude that this is the medial rectus, inferior rectus, and lateral rectus. This is the position of the common tendinous ring, and we can see that the opening of the superior orbital fissure is within the common tendinous ring. If we take the roof of the orbit, we can see this muscle on the medial side, most superior, so this is the superior oblique muscle, which turns around the trochlea and comes back on the eyeball. This is the first muscle we see superiorly, therefore this is the levator palpebris superioris. Now you are acquainted with the roof of the orbit. This is the levator palpebris superioris flapped, removed to the front and underneath it we see superior rectus muscle. This is the this is the superior oblique muscle. Again in this view this is the superior oblique muscle around the trochlea and coming back to the eyeball. This is the lateral rectus. And this is the oculomotor nerve Sorry, this is the <clears throat> abducent nerve coming to the lateral rectus. Medial rectus, because there you can see it's not going around the trochlea and it is deeper. And this is the inferior rectus and the lateral rectus. This is the oculomotor nerve coming to, into the orbit. This is what? Medial rectus, inferior rectus, lateral rectus, oculomotor nerve. <clears throat> this yellow area is the orbital septum. You know, the, the orbit is not open to the outside. There is an orbital septum and the eye bulges through the middle of it. If we remove the orbital septum, we can see the muscles inserted into the eyeball. This is the lacrimal gland, upper part of the orbit. Medial rectus, superior oblique, superior rectus, lateral rectus, inferior, and this is the inferior oblique coming from the floor of the orbit going laterally, inserting on the eyeball. If you take the eyeball out, this structure in the center is going to be the optic nerve. And you can see superior rectus, levator palpebri, lateral rectus, inferior, inferior oblique, medial rectus, and superior oblique. CT scan, coronal, you can see this. This is the optic nerve, and you can see these muscles.
lateral rectus, medial rectus. When this person is looking forward, there is a balance between the tone of the muscles. We are not using any muscle at this moment. The tone of the muscles, you know what a muscle tone is. The little contraction at rest. Muscles, when, like when I'm standing, okay, there is a muscle tone. Let's look at this muscle. <clears throat> It is the superior rectus. This is the insertion of the superior rectus. This is the, the result of its contraction. This is the equator of the eye. Now, because these muscles on the medial side are longer than these ones, longer muscle fibers produce more range of movements. Therefore, what is the action of of this muscle. It is going to be up and medially, okay? Now, the rotation, we are going to omit the movement of rotation because it complicates the, the picture. Therefore, the major action is up. The minor action is, is in. If you look at this muscle here, this is the inferior rectus. This is the horizontal line, just this is the action of the muscle, and this is the insertion. Again, the medial mus uh, muscle fibers are longer than, <coughs> longer than the lateral, therefore, this is going to pull the eye as a major function down and as a minor one to the inside. Let's look at this muscle. This muscle is the inferior oblique, and we are, have just seen the inferior oblique. It takes origin from the floor of the orbit and inserts on the eye laterally. This is the, the line of action. This is the equator of the eyeball. Therefore, the major function is up and out opposite the action of superior rectus, which is up and in. This is up and out. Out means lateral or abduction, okay? Now, this muscle here, the superior oblique that we talked about, <clears throat> this is the equator of the eye. This is the action of uh, the muscle, okay? The eye is going to look down and out, but in this case, in this case, this muscle is going to produce intorsion as well. Intorsion means, like for example, my right eye, right eye will, will move towards the nose. The lower part will move towards the nose. Because if we cut the nerve supply, we're going to have diplopia. Lateral rectus is simple looking lateral. Medial rectus is simple looking medial. One major action. So some muscles have a major action and a minor action, and the lateral and medial recti, they have one major action. This is not a chemical formula, but it is arranged uh, so that we can know quite easily what muscles are supplied by what nerve. LR, lateral rectus, is supplied by sixth cranial nerve, the abducens nerve. Superior oblique is supplied by the fourth trochlea, and the rest four muscles are supplied by oculomotor. LR6 is 043. This person is looking to the right. So he is in the right eye, he is using the lateral rectus by the sixth nerve. And the left eye is looking medially 
and he is using a kilometer nerve. Two different muscles, two different nerves. This young kid is looking to the left. So in the right eye, is going to move toward the nose. Therefore, he's going to use what? The medial rectus, a kilometer. And the left eye will look lateral. And it, he's going to use the lateral rectus, the sixth nerve. Looking up and to the left, superior rectus. The main function of superior rectus is up and medial, okay, up and in. So if you want to test an eye, okay, whether the superior rectus is working or not, you hold a pen and say, look, up and medial. If he can follow, then you are testing this. Looking down and, and to the left, also one muscle, a kilometer, one muscle, trochlea. Okay, two different muscles, two different nerves. Looking down is more complicated. Looking down is inferior rectus and superior oblique. You know the inferior rectus is down and in. Okay, superior oblique is down and out. Therefore, the in and out, they cancel each other. So it is same two nerves, but two different muscles. Up is the same, using two different muscles, one nerve. This is looking up and to the right, down to the right. These are the axes of eye movements. These are the muscles. This is the medial side. Superior rectus is what? Up and in. We're going to ignore this intorsion. Medial rectus is simple, medially. Lateral rectus is simple. <clears throat> Inferior rectus, okay, is down and in. Superior oblique is down and out. Fear oblique is up and out. Here are the muscles in balance. Normal gaze. What about this person? This person is asked to look straight. Okay, so this is the normal eye. This eye is looking down and lateral, down and out, okay? Missing what? Plus, there is a dropping of the eyelid. So that is oculomotor nerve palsy. It is only the superior oblique and the lateral rectus are working. If you see this patient here, this is a normal eye, right? The left eye lid has dropped. Levator palpebris superioris is not pulling it, pulling the, uh, the eyelid. A few, so this is a lid drop. Levator palpebris superioris is not working. Put your finger and push up the eyelid. You can see the eye is looking down and lateral. This is typical description of a kilometer nerve palsy. Same condition. Normal eye, lid drop. Elevate the lid, the eye is looking down and out, down and lateral. This is less severe case of oculomotor nerve palsy. This is the normal eye. Look, compare the eyelid of the right and the one with the left. The left is a little bit dropped. The eye is looking down and out. 
the same person we want to test what is going on. So we ask him to look to the right. The right eye went right. The left eye did not. Okay. <coughs> you ask him to look to the left. The right eye looked to the left and the left eye looked to the left because there is no problem looking to the left. When you ask him to go up, to look up, the, the right eye looked up, the left eye didn't. When you ask him to look down, the right eye looked down and the left eye didn't. So when we have a problem in looking at different directions, the nerve that supplies different muscles is the oculomotor. So we know this is an oculomotor nerve problem. Same condition as the two we saw before. Lid drop, the eye is looking down and lateral oculomotor nerve pulse. What is the problem with this patient? Here is asking the patient to look forward. Okay. When you ask him to look up, Okay, this eye looked up, and this one also looked up, but not good enough. These are minor changes, you will get used to them. Okay, when you ask this person to look, to look down and to the left, this eye looked down and to the left, this eye didn't come down. So let's skip this. This is more obvious. Looking straight forward. Okay. You ask the patient to look up. This eye look. Sorry, this eye looked up. This eye didn't. When you ask to go up and to the left. This eye didn't go up. When you ask the patient to look to the left, okay, there is a little difference, but we are not concerned about it now. When you ask the patient to look down and to the left, this eye went down and to the left, but not as the same as this one. The most obvious case is here. Ask the patient to look down, straight down. This eye looked straight down. This eye didn't obey. This is oculomotor nerve pulse. <clears throat> What's the problem with this young kid? This is normal. This eye is up and in. What is missing is down and lateral, down and out. Which muscle is putting the eye down and lateral? Is the superior oblique. Okay? People who have superior oblique problem, they compensate by turning their head. We will know why. If you look at this person testing his eyes, this is looking straight forward. There are differences, but you need to be very shrewd observer to notice this. Ask to look up, things are well. Up and to the left, things are not well because this eye went up and in, this eye not the same as this one. When you ask him to look to the left, no problem. Ask to look down and left, no problem. Here's the problem. 
you ask the patient to look down. This eye obeyed very well. And this one looked down but went medium, went in. So this is the problem in the right eye. What about this young kid? This is normal eye. This eye is deviated in. It needs to be pulled laterally. So the lateral rectus is, is not working. The lateral rectus is LR6. Okay. Not going into details, but these are very good examples of training. Now, you know why there is a red star here? Is it's because you ask the patient to look to the left. The right eye went to the left. The left eye didn't. So which muscle in which side is affected? It's the lateral rectus of the left side supplied by abducent nerve. Okay, now simple review of muscles. One levator, four recti, two obliques. Okay, the levator has two parts. <clears throat> One is smooth, and the major part is skeletal. This levator is called levator palpebri superioris. Four recti, superior, medial, inferior, and lateral. Two obliques, superior oblique and inferior oblique. The levator palpebri superioris acts on the upper eyelid, not on eye wall. Superior rectus looks up and in. Inferior is down and in. Superior oblique is down and out. Inferior oblique is up and out. And in torsion. Okay? End of the story. Now, we will be talking about the nerves of the orbit. So we have an idea about these muscles. Again, this person has different positions of the eyeball, but we will be looking and concentrating on the nerve supply of, of these muscles producing these problems. This young lady has this eye deviated medially or N. This young lady has this eye moving